Dogs are turning blue and pink in Russia. And someone is shaving cats in a Virginia town. And an Italian hospital employee is accused of skipping work for 15 years. These are the weird stories for Thursday on Weird AF News. This is the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian. My name is Jonesy. I'm glad that you're here. I got some weird stories from around the world. Come on, let's jump into it. Dogs are turning blue and pink in Russia. Very bizarre. People in Russia were taken aback by the blue furred dogs that they saw on the roads. This has been happening for months. Uh, Someone named Alexei, which is the probably the greatest Russian name, Alexei, first shared the pictures of blue furred dogs on a Russian social media platform called Vokontakne. VK, it's known as. Have you heard of this? I never heard of this Russian social media platform. Do they have Facebook over there? I imagine. But the Vodkotnke is also a social media platform. We're learning, guys. Let's find more about the blue doggies. I hope they're okay. The pictures of the dogs have left people very confused, startled. According to the media, people first saw a blue dog near the Dzerzhinsky Orgsteklo plant, which is a shuttered chemical factory that closed down six years ago due to the financial crisis. Oh, this explains it. This dog was hanging out near a chemical factory. Right? But there's more than one, I assume, right? That They're saying blue and pink dogs. Uh, a chemical plant is something that you want to keep your humans and animals away from after it shuts down, typically. But, you know, they abandon these things so recklessly. What, maybe there's a fence. Maybe there's barbed wire around it. There's probably very little follow-up to an abandoned chemical plant. People going by saying, hey, anybody been breaking in? Do we need to mend the fence? I doubt it. Nobody spends the money for like a 24-7 security guard after the plant shuts down. People can just hop over the fence. Next thing you know, you're in a chemical plant. Next thing you know, your titties are blue. Everybody is busy finding the facts behind this mystery or trying to. Uh, You know, what is causing this discoloration? Could it be the Exposure to a chemical residue. Reportedly, Dzerzhinsk is one of the contaminated regions of the country. While some think they are dogs from a rare breed, many still are ambiguous, unclear about the cause. I don't think it's a rare breed, guys. I don't think there's a blue and pink dog breed, dummies. I don't know why you would ever come to that conclusion. The conclusion I would come to was that a very creative child that owns the dog got a little crazy with the spray paint. In the crayons, um, reportedly, the company had been involved in the production of plexiglass and hydrocyanic acid, which is highly toxic. Oh, so that was from the, uh, the chemical plant. That's what they made, plexiglass. The dogs may have been in contact with copper sulfate even, which is a fluorescent blue element. Yeah, yeah, we're, I think we're getting closer to the truth. In, and that is used in the production of these chemicals above. In humans, this chemical... Copper sulfate tends to cause inflammation, damage blood cells, kidneys, and liver with severe exposure, resulting in possible death. So chemical contact could be one of the reasons behind the discoloration of the dogs. That's my guess. But then again, I'm not a, ah, I'm not a super sleuth when it comes to these scientific things. Zusa Shishka Veterinary Hospital also blames some chemicals for the blue hue as well. They get... They explain that they are physically fit and eating well, these dogs. So what could be the explanation? Uh, They're very curious, though. The chemicals have not really affected them physically other than the discoloration, according to them. It says here the case was still under debate when people recently witnessed some dogs with pink fur near the Kristall Defense Plant, which is a snow-covered area in Dzerzhinsk as well. The vets are ensuring their safe health. Since no one has volunteered to take the puppies, there are plans to release them soon. Anybody want some blue and pink puppies? Oh, that sounds lovely. How special would your pups be? People would pay to see your pink puppies, I'd imagine. Uh, you could probably set up like a live stream and charge people to watch the, the pink and blue puppies playing in a pen all day. A lot of peas in that sentence. I'm sorry, sometimes they pop on the microphone. Well, it can't be healthy to be exposed to these chemicals. Let's hope the only fallout to this is the discoloration of the fur and there's not other more serious and detrimental 
health risks involved, but I imagine there are, unfortunately, and perhaps these dogs don't have very long. So we need to get a good home for them, guys. So if you happen to be... <laughs> If you happen to see any discolored animals near a chemical plant in your area, take them home. Give them some love. Give them some meatloaf. The mystery of the shaved cats. Well, you know, we did a dog story. Might as well do a cat story. This is out of Waynesboro, Virginia. In a bizarre case that so far has police and residents very stumped, at least... Seven cats in Waynesboro's Tree Streets neighborhood have been shaved without their owner's permission, according to the Waynesboro police. Oh, who's shaving all these kitties? Somebody who's very concerned with ticks, I'd imagine. Uh, None of the pet owners have seen the individual or the group of individuals that have been shaving these cats. No witnesses have come forward yet either. Captain Kelly Walker said that the cats owned by two separate Tree Streets residents have been shaved in the underbelly, the groin, and the leg areas. He said it appears the shaving was done with a razor of some kind. The cats were not otherwise harmed. Ooh, I know what happened here, guys. This is definitely alien abduction. They've taken the cats into their UFO. They've examined the cats. They want to see what's going on in the underbelly or just, you know, examining the indiv- the uh, organism as a whole. And then they put them back on the streets. This happens to humans all the time. <laughs> they, get, they get pulled up in some beam up into a, a UFO. Next thing you know, they're on a, uh, an operation table. This is how they always describe it. And they're poked around. The, uh, the, quote, aliens are examining them just to find out what's going on with the, with the humans and the organisms on planet Earth. And then they put them back. They put them back into the population. These cats clearly have been examined by somebody from a, a faraway Star system like Zegabanoogie. <laughs> Is that even a star system? I have no idea. Ziggled Um uh, Captain Walker has got some more information for us. Captain Walker says at least two residents of the neighborhood have reported the shaving of their cats involuntary. <laughs> the involuntary shaving of the cats. Police were made aware of the incidents earlier this week. What a strange thing to call the police about. Hey, someone's been shaving my cats, man. Did you catch the perpetrator? No, man, I haven't caught the perpetrator. It's very strange. First of all, it's very difficult to catch cats that aren't yours. I mean, they just don't... Cats aren't as trusting as dogs, you know? You can get a dog into your van if you want to shave a dog. Let's just say you're just some weirdo. You're driving around the neighborhood. You want to shave dogs. You just get, like, a treat on you. The dogs will come up to you. You know, if you can somehow manage to get the dog away from its owner. Usually they're on a leash. Cats? How do you get a cat into your van for shaving? I just don't understand it. Here's a quote from the uh, captain. Collectively, this involves seven cats, indoor and outdoor cats. Uh, Cats are clearly pets. They're not stray. They're not feral cats. They're owned. The cats are all wearing collars. They're they're very well-groomed in general. Now, one of the cat owners asked Captain Walker if he could post street signs to make the residents aware of what is going on. Walker has given his approval for the signs. We've approved the cat signs, the cat shaving signs. Keep your eye open for anybody who's carrying a pair of clippers around the neighborhood. Going, here, kitty, kitty, here, kitty, kitty. (laughs) If you find a stranger with a bunch of cat food in his pockets, perhaps a bowl of milk walking around and and some clippers, please uh, call call the police at 540-942-6675. That's the Waynesboro police. Walker said that if someone... See someone bothering a cat that is not theirs. They should let the police know as, as soon as possible. Are you bothering that cat that isn't the, uh, is not yours? <laughs> this is so bizarre. I mean, someone's got too much time on their hands. Get a life, bro. Bro, if you're shaving these cats and you're listening to this podcast, get a life, dude. Really, get a life. You like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. Too difficult. No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. An Italian man has skipped work for 15 years straight. Find a job that will forget you're actually on the payroll, and you may never have to work a day in your life. 
Italian prosecutors say they busted a guy who raked in roughly $647,000 over 15 years of pay without ever showing up to his hospital job in one of the most egregious cases of absentee abuse they've ever seen at a workplace. <laughs> is this guy a criminal or is he a genius? <laughs> He's figured it out. Getting paid to never go to work? I mean... This guy's really won. I mean, no, he's going to lose in the end. Maybe he has to pay this back or do jail time. But, man, imagine that. Uh, what a sad state of, of affairs that it is in the world when, where I, I hear a story like this. And my first inclination is like, dude, high five. How did you figure it out? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I've been working a day job for too long. <laughs> and now I, <laughs> I can't stand it. I'm like, I'm on board with this guy. If I could figure out a way to get paid and not have to go to my day job, that would be f phenomenal. Jonesy, you haven't even been at your day job for a, ye a year. Already sick of it? Yeah. Yeah, Jonesy's not cut from that kind of cloth. I'm not cut from the day job cloth. I'm a little too weird for the day job. Now, the police have come up with a nickname for this guy. His name is Salvatore Scumas. Scumas? Or Scamachi? I don't know. He's got scum in his last name. S-C-U-M, which is quite a coincidence. <laughs> Salvatore is age 67. Well, this guy's been around. He figured it out. He figured it out. He's like, I'm not going to work the 15 years leading up into my retirement, and then I'm not going to work for the rest of my life. He's been dubbed the king of absentees for his allegedly rampant use of public sector funds in the city of Catanzaro. Uh, this is sad because it's he works for the government in the public sector. Well, I, I hate to see the public funds wasted like this, but I'm, I'm not surprised at all that it's... You know, it's a it's a government funded operation. The government is so dumb everywhere. They just can't figure out. Have you ever been to the website of a government? Every government website is just the worst. That is a fine indication of what you're dealing with. Just ineptness when it comes to government. Only government jobs can be worked for 15 years and you never show up and no one knows for 15 years. That's the only place it happens. Government. Authorities say Salvatore used threats to ensure that he would not be docked for missing work at the local hospital. He later fell off his employer's radar altogether while still collecting paychecks. Scamacci's job, at least on paper, was as a safety officer at the Pugliese Ciaccio Hospital, Italy's, um, one of Italy's public hospitals. I don't know if I said that correctly. Pugliese Ciaccio. I mean, it sounds like a delicious dish. Every... Italian phrase sounds like a delicious dish and you know <laughs> it's actually the name of a hospital but it sounds like it would taste great with some marinara on it Salvatore faces charges of abuse of office forgery aggravated extortion in connection with the scheme oh but good this guy's going to jail for his retirement happy retirement buddy 20 years of your life left golfing no no behind bars Six other managers at the hospital also under investigation for their involvement. Are they taking time off as well? <laughs> oh, the government jobs, you could just totally not show up and they won't know for 15 years. Good job, government. Now, the authorities claim the suspect's absentee abuse began in 2005 when a distinguished person allegedly threatened the hospital director and warned her not to file a disciplinary report against Scomachi. Police say the director complied and turned a blind eye to all of his absences and that the suspect simply never showed up for work ever again while still being paid. So someone was aware that this was going on, but uh, they were threatened because Scumachi is, um, is a connected individual, apparently. The director of the hospital eventually retired. Her successor took over with no knowledge that there was a ghost on the payroll. Human resources also didn't notice. He fell through the cracks. It's unclear when the scheme came to light, but the hospital launched a disciplinary action against Salvatore last year and also alerted authorities. He was finally fired in October and later arrested as part of an investigation dubbed Operation Part-Time. <laughs> Investigators say the arrest came after they conducted extensive witness interviews and reviewed attendance logs at the hospital. <laughs> yeah, the attendance logs showing he's never there. Or is he there and hiding under the desk a la George Costanza on Seinfeld when he worked for the Yankees and he, he was sleeping under his desk all day? Do you guys remember that? Anyone a fan of Seinfeld? Well, you know, they have that quote, which is, if you find a job that you love, you never work a day in your life. Well, I thought that was the best case scenario. Clearly, the best case scenario is 
if you find a job where they don't know that you're missing, then you can take 15 years off and still get paid. Ooh, child, the news is going to get weirder. It is. It's getting weirder all the time. Is it getting weirder all, all the time or just we know all about the weird news because of our uh, technology? I can't, I can't tell what it is. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? I want to give some major, major love. Someone sent me a lovely message and an article from very far away. Uh, this is from Suhail. Uh, Suhail writes, Hey, bro, I'm Suhail. I'm from Malawi, the warm heart of Africa. I listen to your show every morning on my commute. Keep doing you, brother. Here's one for you from my country. Some of my population truly believe that vampires actually walk among us. And, and then there's an article about um, Malawi's fear of blood-sucking vampires. This is really fascinating, this. I love this. Weird stuff from all around the world. Uh, and, and I really appreciate having a listener in the heart of Africa. I hope I said your name right, Suhail, Suhail. Uh, this is phenomenal. I never thought I would have... I mean, I, I think I got a couple of listeners in South Africa. Um, and then, do I got someone in, uh, in Nigeria, right? In Kenya. And now I have someone in Malawi. Where are my African listeners? Please reach out to me. I want to get everybody organized here. Maybe I'll do a tour of Africa and I'll come and visit you. Can I crash on your couch? Do you guys have couches in Africa? I'd love to crash on your couch and visit the warm heart of Africa. I'll bring my swimming trunks. Uh, and uh, if you got internet, man, I'm doing an episode in your house. How about that? <laughs> of course we have internet, Jonesy. I know, I'm just playing games, guys. Just trying to be funny, guys. Uh, but anyways, super appreciative of Suhail, Suhail uh, from Malawi. Big shout out to you, my brother. And uh, I, I just love, please write me again. I'm going to write a response to your email, but please stay in touch because I think this is just amazing that I have a listener all the way in Malawi. Tell a friend about the show, man. Um, and thanks for the article. You guys can send me this kind of thing at funnyjones at gmail.com. No matter where you are, you can send me an article. You can drop me a message. You can say, hey, what's up, brah? Just say, hey, what's up, brah? Also, I want to uh, introduce someone named Beth. Beth joined the Patreon, and I'm so grateful that Beth joined the Patreon. We got to give Beth a nice shout out here because Beth joined the Patreon, and that shows how generous that she is and supportive that she is, and, um, and I love that. Um, Beth clearly appreciates the show, probably listens daily, and that's great. Um, and and uh, what, what do I want to say about that? Well, Beth, first of all, you're the best. Second of all, welcome to the group. Welcome to our little group of patrons that we have. They're a lovely bunch of people, about 100 or so, and they're just great people. They're in there. We're having conversations. They're, they're enjoying the weird extra content that I'm putting in there, which I, I will be posting a video uh, no, no later than tomorrow of me trying some weird treats from around the world. So enjoy all that. There's bonus episodes in there. Thank you, Beth, so much. Uh, so guys, shout out to Beth. You also can join Beth by joining the Patreon. It's very easy. Patreon.com slash weirdafnews. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. You can also go to weirdafnews.com and join the Patreon from there. There's a link on the homepage because I thought of everything. That's right. I thought of it. I thought of everything. Actually, I paid somebody to help me think of that because I, I don't know what I'm doing as far as building a website. Uh, what else? Uh, a couple people reached out to me. Hold on a second. Uh, Danny Jagger or Jager. Danny Jaeger uh, reached out with a nice email, long email, uh, responding to the story I did about the uh, transgender teenager that had two funerals. Um, and someone else reached out about that as well. Uh, look, uh, Who do we have here? Um, oh, this is Days Morrissey. Days Morrissey sent me an article. Thank you, Days. What a cool name, Days Morrissey. That's a super awesome name, by the way. Uh, uh, what else? What else? Oh, that's about it. Uh, that's all I'll cover today. You guys can reach out anytime. Send me something. You get a response to one of the articles. You can email that to me or call 646-450-2012. Don't be shy. Call the number. It's all good. Tomorrow's Florida Friday, by the way. So if you got something from Florida, send it on in. Uh, you can also send articles to my Twitter, at Funny Jones, to my Facebook, which is Comedian Jonesy, and my Instagram, at Funny Jones as well. So send in those Florida stories for tomorrow, which is Friday, and we will lead you into the weekend with the, with the highest quality Florida Friday episode that I can muster. Uh, 